Hello and welcome to the Cinematic Attic YouTube channel. It's time once again to take a look at what I've picked up since the last time we talked. Or the last time I talked. Or the last time I talked and you turned off the video. First up, a little movie that I saw for the first time that I thought was fabulous. And I had this VHS copy and which will now be going away because I had to replace it on disc. Serial Killing 101. This is a fun movie. Um, pretty low budget, um, but uh, it does have Thomas Hayden Church, who is, who is hysterical in this movie. Um, Lisa Loeb is in it, playing a teenager. This movie is just fun. And it's funny. Um, I, I I sat down to watch this, um, and, and I had no idea it was going to be as enjoyable as it was. And those are the movies that you you sit through so many films hoping to find. So this one I highly recommend. I had to get that one. Next up, I realized um, I only had this on VHS, so I had to. Upgrade it sooner than later. Vanishing Point, a film that I love. This one also has the uh, UK edition or UK version with an extra scene in it, which, um, having watched that scene now, uh, I feel should have stayed in the movie. Um, so I'll probably watch, <laughs> if I watch this again anytime soon, I'll probably watch the uh, UK version. Um, but Vanishing Point, all-time classic. Had to pick that up, and it will replace this VHS I've had for a long time. Then uh, MVD had a sale on Blue Underground uh, items. I um, took advantage of that to get a bunch to upgrade a bunch of VHS and get a bunch of. Uh, films for not a lot of money because uh, most of the DVDs they were selling they were selling for I think three dollars or something like that um, one of these was five but uh, you know uh, I'm sure a lot of other people who went to that sale concentrated on getting you know the, the new 4k's of blue underground titles or at least the blu-rays I uh, took a chance or I took the chance to uh, Get some cheap DVDs. So first off, Toolbox Murders, which will upgrade this VHS. A Bullet for the General, which will upgrade this VHS. Manhattan Baby. We'll upgrade this VHS. I got this one because it was a science fiction film I did not own or haven't and haven't seen. Uh, the Shape of Things to Come. Got the uh, blood Bloodstained Shadow. Uh, this is one I've had in my Amazon cart for a long time. So took the chance uh, to get that for three bucks. A Franco Nero uh, Western that I didn't have, Man, Pride, and Vengeance. This was the uh, one that was five dollars, Vigilante. Again, I know there's a, I think a 4K of this, but this is fine, and it will upgrade this VHS. And the final one, uh, I saw this movie. Quite a while ago, so now I own it. Machine Gun McCain. So that's what I got from that sale. Blue Underground items. Uh, let's see. This, uh, I, I'm trying to collect all the Fox Film Noir series, you know, the numbered ones. Um, 
This one, House of Strangers, I usually see going for uh, a decent amount of money. I saw it, um, I think it was eBay, maybe Mercari, I'm not sure, for a very low price, very nice price, so I snatched it up, House of Strangers. Um, at some point, I'm really going to crack down and get all of, the, all of these uh, that I don't have. For my birthday, which October 9th, I know it's past, but just for next year, October 9th, <laughs> uh, got the new Thor, Thor Love and Thunder. And the Scream Factory edition of Alone in the Dark, which has been out a while, but uh, it's been in my Amazon cart ever since and uh, so it was on my uh, Amazon wish list and this is what and, and this is the one that uh, was chosen from that list as a gift for me so happy to have that then some vinegar syndrome partner label stuff that I got from here and there um, I ordered uh, the corn shucker because uh, I knew this was not going to last. There's, last I checked, only 200 some copies left of the one that has no slip cover, like this one. Um, the first released re release from VHS Hidfest. That's the uh, PG way to say it. Um, this was kind of cool. <laughs> So um, if you're on the fence about this, uh, check it out. The movie's only 63 minutes, so it doesn't overstay its welcome. But it sure is weird, and that's good. From Terror Vision, got the Blood, Guts, and Sunshine documentary about um, uh, horror made in Florida. And this is over two hours, so it's, you know long enough. I know a lot of movie documentaries about, I should say, m documentaries about movies. I often want more, and uh, so they gave us a two-hour film out the gate, so that was great. From AGFA, I wanted to check this out because I heard it recommended. I know it's one of the Bleeding Skull guy's recommendations. Limbo? film by actress uh, Tina Krause. She's been in a lot of movies, a lot of shot on video movies and low budget movies. This is the movie she made. So and it's supposed to be a trip. So I'm kind of eager to check that out. And uh, the final one, final pickup from the Saturn's Core label, uh, Ravage. Um, shot on video uh, by the same person that did Sinister um, that also came out from Saturn's Core so I'm eager to check that out too now we'll now turn you over to our friendly neighborhood correspondent out in the field me hello I am not on my couch right now I'm actually out visiting my friend JJ say hi JJ hello and uh, he lives in Pennsylvania near Ohio, so I'm actually in Calcutta, Ohio, in a cemetery because we hang out there. That's yeah. not weird, right? <laughs> anyway, um, so to add some production value, we just went to Goodwill, and I'm going to uh, tell you what I got while I'm here in the cemetery. It is October after all. So one thing I like about the Goodwill here is uh, all the DVDs are a dollar, no matter what, even Blu-rays. Uh, I didn't get any of those, however. but just to quickly show you what I got, the Aviator, this is not that Aviator, this is the one with uh, Christopher Reeve. I got the Big Valley Season 2 Volume 1, love me some TV westerns, and this is one I've always meant to get into. Mother Jugs and Speed, this will be a VHS upgrade for me. House of Sand and Fog, Jennifer Connelly. 
things change? I don't know. It was a dollar. The uh, Overboard Remake. The, the uh, DVD that I dropped. The Imposters. Uh, again, a dollar. Why not? Like dandelion dust? No idea. One dollar. I said yes. And the final one, most interesting find, actually a horror movie, Demon Hunter. Uh, this is actually an Anchor Bay DVD, so I grabbed that up. Uh, don't know anything about it, but uh, I'll find out. And so there you go. Good old finds. Under ten dollars. Great stuff. Here's everything else I picked up. Went to the Penmar Antique Market. And here's some of what I got. And here's the rest. And so these VHS can be deleted. I got this a set of Children of the Corn films. It's uh, parts two through seven. Because um, I was trying to get part two in widescreen. I have all of these films, but I didn't have number two in widescreen. This was advertised as widescreen. Matter of fact, even says right there, widescreen, enhanced for 16 by 9 TVs. Guess what? It's not widescreen. <sighs> oh well. Moving on, from Goodwill, picked up some DVDs. This one will upgrade this VHS. This one will upgrade this VHS. Picked up the Prophecy Collection. Um, the only bad thing about this set is they put all five films on one disc, but it will upgrade these two VHS. few items from my local Dollar Tree. Went to an antique mall that I hadn't been to in at least a year or more. Uh, and here's what I found. Unintentional uh, DVD upgrade there. The... Um, Blu-rays were all about two dollars or two fifty. DVDs were mostly ninety-nine cents, with a couple exceptions. There are also some VHS upgrades in here. couple of other items in there. Got this uh, movie I've been curious about. Um, it's a Tokyo Shock release. Happy to find that there. Also found this um, low-budget, local to somewhere um, horror film, which uh, comes with three discs. The movie, a disc of bonus features, and a disc of the soundtrack. So, kind of curious to See what that's all about. Went back to the antique mall Hokey G's where I had gone last episode, and I got a bunch more. There was a, a booth when I was there last time, which has the majority of the DVDs, all a dollar. Uh, well, mostly a dollar. And there was someone there last time that was taking up the entire space uh, for the entire time I was in the store. 
So I just gave up. Um, this will upgrade a full screen DVD. And I just said, I'll come back. And that's what I did. A lot of VHS upgrades in here. And so these VHS and a couple DVDs can be deleted from the collection. It's time once again to take a look at movies in the Pantheon. That is to say, movies that are my all-time favorites. This time, a little bit different. But I'm going to get started, though, with a childhood favorite. One that I've seen um, possibly more than any other movie. Maybe. I'm not sure. And that is Transformers the Movie. The uh, animated movie from the 80s. This um, is simply due to me loving this since I was a kid. Um, when I was a kid, I um, loved Transformers more than any other thing. And so I watched the TV show, obviously. When they announced the movie, I was so excited. I was beside myself. And then it never played anywhere near me. So I had to wait <laughs> years before I actually got to see the movie. And even then it was, um, at first it was just a couple pieces that were on TV because they uh, at one point broke up the movie and put it uh, in as part of the episode, uh, cartoon episode syndication or something. Um, they had like uh, CGI Optimus Prime introduce the segments or something. I don't know. I don't remember. But... Um, eventually I remember I watched it in full once, uh, when I was young, I convinced my family to get a, um, video store rental card. And for, this was for, I think a particular rental place in a grocery store just so that they could rent the uh, VHS so that I could take it to someone else's house and watch it <laughs> because my family uh, never has owned any kind of home video playback equipment whatsoever. So that was um, a challenge growing up. I never even got a, a VCR till I started college. Yeah. Anyway. So. I first watched this movie on a VHS looking just like this. And of course I will forever keep this. Um, edition. Uh, I later, of course, learned that um, there had been a scene cut out of this um, where someone says a bad word in the movie. So when Rhino put out their special edition VHS later, where they put that scene back in, I had to get that. So here's that. And then eventually, um, 20th anniversary special edition DVD, lenticular cover, double disc, lots of special features. Um, first time uh, available also in widescreen. Um, this was great for me. Um, I should mention I also have uh, two different editions of the soundtrack. <laughs> but uh, then the 30th anniversary Blu-ray is where I stopped. You can get this on 4K now, but um, at this point I think I'm good. But I have watched this so many times. Uh, love that. So, in in the same vein, I thought, you know, this is a movie that most people have heard of, um, at least of a certain age. And so, I thought I would go through what movies are in my pantheon that are movies that most people have heard of or seen. Um, I usually spotlight movies that are eh, somewhat obscure. Um, and uh, so at this time I thought, let me quickly run through a bunch that uh, you've probably seen. And uh, I will tw try not to dwell on these 
very long. But well, I'm talking things like Ghostbusters. This is my um, Blu-ray steelbook. Ghostbusters, um, obviously a movie. Everyone knows, everyone's seen, at least you should have, the original Ghostbusters from the 80s. I um, remember seeing this in the theater when it came out, although I do remember we were probably 10 minutes late, so it was years before I got to see those first 10 minutes, <laughs> uh, probably when it was played on TV or something. Um, but yeah, um, Ghostbusters, I mean, what do you say about it other than who you're going to call? Another childhood favorite that I saw in the theater, Gremlins. Love this movie also. Um, I remember the funny thing about seeing this movie in the theater was that there was an intermission. I don't know if it was intended. <laughs> they may have had problems with the film, I don't know. But, um, you know, not exactly a movie long enough to necessarily require a, an intermission. Uh, but, anyway. Uh, Gremlins, yeah. I mean, great movie. I mean, come on. Um, here you go. <laughs> Star Wars Trilogy, being Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi. All three of these were formative for me when I was young, so of course they're in the Pantheon. I'm not like the world's biggest Star Wars fan, um, which is not to say I don't like it, obviously. Um, and this is my widescreen DVD box set with the extra disc with the documentary I still haven't watched. Um, it's just that, you know, Star Wars fandom can get pretty uh, hardcore, and I'm not one of those. I just, I like it. And uh, I kind of, um, I was I was on board with it until Disney took over, and this isn't some kind of a, you know, boo-hoo Disney took over kind of thing. It's just that I had um, been somewhat invested in the canon, you know, reading books and comics and all the stuff that was considered canon. And then when Disney took over, they said, nope, the only thing that counts anymore are the films and a couple other things. What we do from now on will be what counts. And I was kind of out. I, I liked where it had gone past these movies. The um, the new movies that shows what now officially has gone on past these movies uh, did not treat these characters very well, in my opinion. So while they're fine as movies, um, I'm I kind of ducked out. <laughs> so, but these these three are classics. What do you say? And I first owned them in this three VHS set, which I'm keeping obviously um, then when they did the special editions I got the VHS box of those then well not then but at some point I also um, got a couple uh, other VHS copies of the first movie and in pulling these off the shelf I realized I can get rid of this one I have really no have no need to keep that one but one I am keeping is this uh, 1983 release of the first movie which has a sort of drawer box for it and I love VHS coming at you <laughs> uh, this one, um, this particular edition, I haven't seen a lot of on eBay. I just took a look out of curiosity. The uh, only copy I saw after scrolling through about a hundred different Star Wars VHS um, was in worse condition than this and was selling for $325. I don't know how on point that is, but I'm going to keep this one. If for no other reason than cool drawer VHS um, jumping from Star Wars to Star Trek because I've always thought of myself more of a Star Trek person I've always been more into the uh, the um, more straightforward science fiction of Star Trek there are three Star Trek films that are in my pantheon of favorite movies and uh, I have them all inside of this big 
box set that I picked up years ago. It has the first 10 films. So the three that are my favorite. Part four, The Voyage Home. The whole travel back in time uh, to the 80s thing. <laughs> uh, this, this movie's just fun. And I've seen it a few times. Love it. Then, Star Trek Generations. This, I think, uh, yeah, this was the first Star Trek film I actually saw in the theater. Um, has the first Next Generation crew. Has Kirk and Picard meeting. Um, has that great uh, scene of the ship crashing on a planet, which in the theater was just astounding. Astounding. Um, always loved that one. Seen it quite a few times. And the third one is the next one, Star Trek First Contact. You give me the next gen crew, you give me the Borg, you give me time travel, you got me. And this one, just so much fun. Love it. Um, those films I also have on VHS that I'm keeping part four because I have the uh, original the original Star Trek crew films on these VHS that that all form a picture of the Enterprise on one side and kind of a space scene on the other. I have those all on my shelf and I'm not getting rid of them. I have Generations on VHS that has that burst on the cover. This is the first movie that I uh, where I learned um, that those Initial video store prices of seventy, eighty dollars are real. Or were real back in the day. I um, when I when I heard this was coming to VHS, um, I misunderstood. <laughs> it was coming to VHS for rental, and so I went to the video store saying, "Hey, I want to buy a copy." And they said, "Well, we can order one for you, but it'll be I don't know what they said, seventy some dollars." And I looked at them stupidly. <laughs> I uh, realized that if I wanted to actually own it for uh, a better price, which at that time was probably 15 to $20. I had to wait a longer for the sell-through retail, which I did. And uh, this is the copy I bought back then. And then I've also kept the first contact VHS because it has lenticular cover, and that's just cool. Uh, moving on. Matrix. I can't say enough how when this movie came out, it was <laughs> it was a revelation. Uh, this was the movie that you know I would try to get all my friends to watch. Say, hey, you got to see this movie. It's insane, and it's you know a mind bender, and it's just whatever. Um, and I still have the special collector's edition VHS that I bought first. I think it actually has a special feature or two that's not on here, so I keep it. But, um, yeah, Matrix, what do you say? That was, that was revolutionary. Now to perhaps the most uh, recent item uh, of common films that you've heard of from just a few years ago. We have Avengers Endgame. This is the uh, Target uh, 4K special package. Um, this is my favorite Marvel film, Marvel Studios film, because this brought together everything I, I ever wanted. I am a lifelong Marvel fan. I was reading Marvel comics before I could read. I had a Spider-Man comic. I was looking at the pictures. Um, I love these characters. I grew up with these characters. I still read these characters. They are like fictional family. So seeing a movie like this where they bring them all together, um, there's such drama there's such um, comedy. There's such everything. Uh, this, this, I will say this. There is no other film that I have watched where I have had tears in my eyes through most of the movie. Not just because there are sad parts, because there are sad parts, but because um, I'm just so happy. <laughs> and because I have such pride for these characters and seeing them all together in here doing their thing 
Um, I will tell you there is uh, that one scene uh, towards the end where Captain America is the only one conscious um, left to fight Thanos and his army and he's all beaten up and he pulls himself to his feet you can tell he's broken and bloody and his shields broken and he pulls himself to his feet and he pulls the shield tighter he grits his teeth and he's ready to go even though he will most likely be killed and that just embodies why I love superheroes um, at least the good ones <laughs> um, that is a scene in a film that I think of whenever I feel uh, defeated. I, I run that in my head and, and I keep going. So, you know, as much as he deserves all the accolades and credit for all of he's done for film, uh, Martin Scorsese can bite me. <laughs> Next up, 2001 A Space Odyssey. Yeah. What do you say about this? Stanley Kubrick, masterpiece. Now, I have always said the controversial statement that um, if I were to be given the chance, I would uh, edit this movie a little tighter. <laughs> Some people would uh, slay me for that. But it doesn't take away from the fact that it is a masterpiece. When I uh, got my first um, widescreen... Uh, big TV. This DVD is the first thing I bought uh, to watch in it for obvious reasons. Now if I were to, I haven't watched this in years so you know that whole comment about editing parts out I may change my mind so you know doesn't matter. Uh, this is still just great. Tremors! This is just good old-fashioned monster movie fun. Um, <laughs> this I used to watch every time it came on TV. Uh, just a joy. Um, this kind of embodies why I love crazy monster movies. Um, it's wonderful. Another childhood favorite, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Um, this hit me just right when I was a kid because it's weird, it's um, freaky, <laughs> it's just, um, it sparked my imagination really, um, no pun intended, <laughs> but uh, this one is just, um, I think I, we may, I may have first seen it showed to me in school, if not it was on TV or something, but this one has always been uh, a weird treat. Mad Max. Now here's another controversial thing. As much as I love The Road Warrior, I like this movie more. The original, Mad Max. It has a, a, a different tone, different atmosphere, something a little bit different. I mean, it's it's just on the edge of that post-apocalyptic world it has some real um, uh, brutal moments it's it's just a different thing and uh, I've, I've loved this ever since I saw it for the first time so while this is in the Pantheon now and technically the Road Warrior is not that doesn't mean that the Road Warrior may not make it in someday so anyway Mad Max Oh, how can you go wrong with The Wizard of Oz? Um, yeah, this, this was the movie that came on TV every year and you just watched it. This is what you did. This is a movie I've seen many times since that, uh, since those days. Um, it's just a classic. I mean, it's The Wizard of Oz. Now, this DVD I have, uh, I was happy to find, uh, also includes on its second disc the TV movie The Dreamer of Oz with John Ritter and Annette O'Toole um, kind of a, a biographical film of, of uh, the author of The Wizard of Oz and I watched that when it first came on television and so I was thrilled to get it on this disc um, so that's a bonus for having this edition um, I've 
had other VHS editions, at least one other, but this is the only one I've kept because there's a little booklet on the front and I didn't want to part with that so I keep this one in the collection next up is uh, probably the most obvious one to have on a list of great films favorite films whatever you want to consider it Citizen Kane yeah, this this one um, this is a film school right here. This is a movie that when I want to get inspired to set up um, shots for film, this is this is what you watch. I mean, when I start watching this, I get hypnotized by all the the artistry and and the camera work and and the story's great too. It's I, I, I totally understand why this is on, you know, the number one spot for a lot of greatest films list. I totally get that. Those who try to be contrary and argue with that just because, you know, it's so well regarded, um, just stop it. A true masterpiece of cinema right here. Now, I also own a couple of VHS copies of this. This is the first copy I ever owned. And I keep this because it has a um, 50th anniversary special... Reflections on Citizen Kane, um, I don't think is on here, on here, but uh, I keep that. Also, I keep this T <laughs> TCM uh, edition with uh, some stuff that just fell out of it, um, because it has a, a nice um, cover that opens up with information and things like that. Anytime the VHS copy has some kind of extra bell or whistle I tend to keep it and this was just the original advertising uh, insert then last three films all go together back to the future one two and three uh, one is classic, two is fun, three is magic. Um, so you put them together, there's this progression of just a great unified story. Um, I used to love how they interconnected uh, back in the back when I watched them. Um, I don't recall if I saw the first one in the theater, but I definitely saw parts two and three in the theater. Um, I remember that initial shock <laughs> when part two said to be continued. I had never experienced that before on a film. Um, to know that I'd have to wait uh, for another film to get the conclusion. That was new and different. Um, but yeah, great stuff. I have this um, Blu-ray booklet edition that has uh, each movie on Blu-ray and a bonus disc with other goodies. Um, so that's my edition of Back to the Future 1, 2, and 3. And uh, yeah, so there's there's a look at some pretty common films that happen to be in the, my pantheon of favorite movies. Here's something else. So, like many others, I participate in the 31 Days of Horror and watch 31, at least 31, horror films in the month of uh, October. Um, so here is the first half, being about halfway through October. These are about half of the films I've watched so far. Um, so starting with the first one, it's a movie that I watched from Netflix, and that is One Bedroom. I watched this on a recommendation, and this is a movie that if I kind of tell you the main conceit of the movie, I give away the, at least the first uh, uh, big shock, but it shouldn't really be a surprise. Um, this girl rep, uh, rents a, an apartment that seems a little too good to be true. Well, let's just say the community is not, uh, not all that great. <laughs> um, it was a pretty good movie pretty suspenseful um, 
it did have a, a an ending that was satisfying um so you know I, I i don't intend to say a whole lot about all these movies just kind of tell you what i've been watching and a little bit what i thought so uh, i'd say check it out second one i watched was prophecy part two from 1998. Um, i had seen the original prophecy with christopher walken a long time ago i have this uh, set of all five of the films uh, so I finally watched part two not not uh, not a film that does a whole lot of anything special although Christopher Walken pretty much steals anything he's in so he's worth watching Brittany Murphy is actually in this film um, if you didn't know that um, has has some some good stuff in it um, but anyway prophecy 2 then I watched some horror on VHS that I have that are not necessarily on uh, DVD or Blu-ray. Um, maybe in another country, maybe not in a great edition, but um, VHS is pretty much the best way to go the, from what I can tell right now. I watched, as the third film, The Ripper. I have here on VHS as Tom Savini in it um, a, a really low budget film obviously um, but it's pretty good uh, pretty fun um, I, it did go on probably a little too long but not a bad film the fourth film was by the same director and this is a sequel to Blood Cult and that is Revenge Patrick Wayne John Carradine um, more <laughs> more threat of the blood cult um, not bad either um, probably also uh, a little too long but oh well so finally check that out fifth film the kiss um, I don't remember a whole lot about the plot other than that's some evil possession stuff happening um, then I watched The Keep and I actually watched this it is currently streaming on the Criterion channel in widescreen which is the uh, the reason to watch it there um, it's notoriously difficult to find in any kind of widescreen um, but I have this VHS which I've had for a long time but yeah, check that out on Criterion. Then uh, streaming on Canopy, I watched Night of Fear from 1973, um, an Australian film originally intended for television, but deemed a little too uh, intense for television. And it's basically about a girl who um, is pursued and is captive of this crazy guy who likes to, um, you know, kidnap torture women kind of thing um that was pretty good actually uh then i watched a great double feature on one of the mgm midnight movie discs of the return of dracula and the vampire these are both directed by the same uh person and they're both written by the same different person uh, these were just a surprise. They were a lot of fun. I was not expecting these to be as good as they were. Uh, the Return of Dracula. Uh, well, both of them, actually, take place in small-town America. In The Return of Dracu Dracula, you have a vampire who comes from Europe, takes the place of this family's uncle, comes to live with them, um, and he's there to try to start um, making vampires in America. <laughs> Um, but it's it's a uh, very 50s small town kind of thing but you just inject a vampire so that was really kind of cool then the, the other movie the vampire is more more of a Jekyll and Hyde thing um, a guy um, accidentally takes some some drug or something that makes him turn into a monster uh, the only thing it really has in common with a vampire is the victims end up with holes in their neck but basically he's just a monster um but again you know more small smallish town america kind of um a monster movie so 
really cool double feature there. I recommend these. Then uh, streaming on Disney Plus, I watched the Werewolf by Night special, uh, which was uh, 50 some minutes, so feature length. So as far as I'm concerned, it's a TV movie. Um, the Marvel Studios uh, Werewolf by Night also had Man Thing in it. Um, it was it was not the greatest thing I've ever seen, but it was it was good and it introduced some of those characters into the MCU, which I'm thankful for. So um, all around um, an enjoyable watch, and you know, about the right length. So yeah, they they did it right with the with um, making that a special. I think especially making it look like an old uh, like an old 40s movie. So that was pretty cool. Next up is Amityville 3D, um, which is Amityville 3. This I watched because I thought I had seen it. In other words, I thought I had watched the original uh, string of Amityville films. And then I realized, nope, I had somehow missed or skipped part three. I've seen four and the ones after it, but not this one. So I remedied that. Um, a pretty average haunted house movie. Then I watched two films out of this Mill Creek Bloody Nightmares box, which has a hundred films because it includes two two smaller packs: um, Decrepit Crypt of Nightmares, fifty film collection, and Tomb of Terrors, fifty film collection. This is. Um, something I got a long time ago and didn't quite value until years later. This is a hundred films that are uh, either shot on video or just low budget and um, it has become a really nice collection in my collection. So I watched two from that. Um, I watched a shot on video Todd Sheets film, uh, Zombie Rampage which eh, is okay, um, you know, Todd Sheets, uh, this is an early effort from him, so, you know, it was just all right. Um, then from 2004, a, a, a strange film called I Hate You, <laughs> which is kind of a horror comedy, but horror in the terms of, like, um, serial killer. Serial killer who uh, is a stand-up comedian. <laughs> so his comedy is about killing people as well. Um, not very long, but um, interesting. I mean, not the greatest thing, but a very interesting uh, concept. Then, uh, playing off of uh, the Werewolf by Night uh, movie that introduced Man-Thing into the MCU, I watched the old um, 2005 effort, Man-Thing, which is in essence a monster movie. That's how this this was um, done, as basically a monster movie. Uh, and it, it's not actually as bad as as people say. This has a, a incredibly low rating, uh, but I found it to be mm, pretty fun. So, you know, don't listen to other people. <laughs> not not a terrible film. It was kind of uh, strange to see that one of the I think executive yeah executive producers one of the executive producers was Kevin Feige before Kevin Feige was Kevin Feige uh, back when he was still involved with Marvel things but not you know running the MCU then uh, movies 15 and 16 to finish out this half of the month of uh, 31 days of horror watching I watched Hard Rock Zombies and Slaughterhouse Rock on this double feature from Vinegar Syndrome. Uh, Hard Rock Zombies was strange enough to be good. <laughs> it was enjoyable because it was whacked out. Slaughterhouse Rock was, was okay. But uh, if I had to watch one again, it would be this one. <laughs> So anyway, those are the uh, 15th and 16th films I've watched this month for 31 Days of Horror. Um, there, uh, the next time uh, I do a video, you'll see part two where you'll have the remaining 15 
or more. So until then, everyone, enjoy your movies. <laughs>